Hello and welcome back to The Lamenters. We ended on quite a little twist, if you shall. You guys have discovered this mysterious mine that is underneath the hill where you found the Crescent Ravine. Um, you rescued a man who introduced himself as Niccolo Vincenzo from a, a prison-like room. And he had warned you that every couple days they come back to feed him. And they always, there's two days of food and then they come back on the third day and that it's been two days and that they might be coming back. Um, you guys rescued him. You brought him above the mine and uh, Gizmo and Niccolo Vincenzo and Credo um, and the remaining surviving knights, uh, soldiers. Um, you guys are up above, kind of on the plateau in the ring of tree stumps. Um, meanwhile, Freya, Brolgood, and Elena went back down to search the rest of this space. And you guys, while searching, actually discovered a way out of the mine, hundreds of feet away from the plateau where you guys are, down, you know, downhill and past uh, the, the hilly area into another kind of open area. Um, you also discovered more evidence that kind of showed that at some point this was probably a mine because you found like a mining office with, you know, a desk and, and you found like lanterns and picks and, you know, chisels and hammers and other tools. Um, then turning to another one of the cross hallways, you came to a T intersection and discovered that there was another long hallway with doors on each end, but that there was also a door just 15 feet in from the intersection. And this door was very similar to the door in which uh, you had found Niccolo Vincenzo. It had a large four inch gap at the bottom and you could see the flickering light of a candle. Um, however, there was not a key on a ring <laughs> hanging outside of this door. And your attempts to unlock this, this prison door uh, were not successful. And thus it was that in a, a fit of heroic strength, Brolgood began smashing the oak door with his axe and chipping away until finally you guys broke through the door. And as the door broke in, you saw a man cowering in rags, disheveled, gaunt looking, uh, greasy, you know, dark, curly hair, kind of dirty. Um, and he looked exactly like Niccolo Vincenzo. <laughs> in fact, introduced himself when, when you asked and inquired, or he, he said, I am Niccolo, Niccolo Vincenzo. And that is where we left off and also where we will pick up right now. So this man, by all accounts, looks exactly like the first man that you met. Uh, there are also two plates with crumbs and, you know, food, food debris on them. He looks up at Elena and, and Freya uh, with pleading eyes. And he says, please, you are here to free me? This guy looks like more ragged than the other one we found, right? Um, in a sense, like... He looks a little more thin and his clothes are a little dirtier and more ragged. I give him some water because he said he needed some water. Thank you. And he, he drinks a bit of the water <clears throat> and he says, can you help me please to, to escape this prison? How long have you been down here? I do not know time has passed there is no no sun or moon i do not even know truly where i am when you know they captured me and brought me here they they placed a sack over my head so it was difficult for me to to see uh, the sound of of <clears throat> his soldiers the tongue in which they spoke was not uh, 
something I am familiar with. Their language was very rough. Their, their commands were very difficult. Did you see them? Did you get a look at them? Yes. But I do not understand because they they looked like the the hill people, the orcs. But these ones, they wore uh, like the armor of soldiers and the the boots of a man, uh, the, the the helmet and the the weapons. Look not so much, not so much like the rocks and the the clubs that you you see or the furs of animals. I do not understand why it is, but these. These very rough creatures, they, they, after put me in here, bring me food, is the only way that I know how much time I passed. Because they come with two, two foods and he gestures at the floor on these plates. And after like one day of no food, they come. And he gestures again to the food, and he says, I think they are coming soon, perhaps. We killed them. You killed them? We are free. I turn and look at Rolgood. This this isn't good. You realize what's going on, correct? I'm not really certain what's going on here with... But... I think we need to uh, try to get him out of here and maybe also look at at the other end of the tunnel that we haven't explored yet. I agree. Uh, you you would think it is safe to leave this place? As safe as it's going to get. He stands up carefully and you notice he's like, he winces in pain as he stands up and he's like... Forgive me, I have no shoes. I, I, my body is very sore for sleeping on this floor. I'll help him up, and as I'm helping him up, I'm trying to get a look at his neck. Okay. Uh, as actually because of that slick move, when you go to like help him up, you you kind of lift him up by the elbow, and he leans forward, and at that point, you could see. On the back of his neck is the crescent mark. Okay. And I just take a quick look inside of the the cell to see if there's anything of interest okay. in there before we walk out. Make a search check. Okay. Oh, that's a six. Do you have full dots or are you short? No, I only have four. Ooh. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, there there really isn't a lot to search. There's literally mm-hmm. like. This this decrepit bedroll uh, and a, a tattered blanket, stubs of candles, and then the the plates of food. You you don't. Um, he he stands up and, and he's like, by chance, did you find my case? When I was traveling, I have a a chest with my my personal effects my my clothes, uh, some books of history, and something is very important. We can imagine. We haven't found it yet. But we're looking for it. Ah, I see. We are going then? We're going to go look these other couple little hallways and rooms, and I think after that we'll have explored this entire place. He, he takes like his remaining candle and he he holds it and he's like I am ready lead the way and you see he kind of looks out the hall <clears throat> both ways as if he's uncertain yeah I look at Brolgood real quick and I just tap my own neck so Freya you're down the hall and you see them come out with Niccolo Vincenzo mm-hmm. for all appearances other than the rags that he's wearing, which are like 
torn and tattered. By the looks of him, he is the same man. Okay. Let's so, s- smash cut <laughs> up to the surface. Martin, um, Gizmo, and Kratos. You guys are up there uh, on the plateau with Niccolo Vincenzo, and and he's like, he he looks to you and he's like, I hope that your friends can can find my case because I do not know what they would do if, if they find my candle holder. We hope so too. We might have, uh, if what you are saying is true, then we ha- might have a way to destroy it, but we need to g- get all of them to Castle Lee. Yes, yes. I hope so. And and he's like just kind of nervous and, and he, he looks between you guys and and kind of the looks around the plateau. Smash cut back into the dungeon. Freya. Um, <laughs> Elena and Brolgood come out and you see this tattered man and he's carrying a candle and he looks like Niccolo Vincenzo. And, and he comes out towards you guys. Or where actually, where do you go? Do you walk back to the intersection by Freya? Um, there was another door f- further down the hall? Yes, there's another door further down the hall from the cell. Okay. Let's um, finish up, Freya. We're going to get out of here. Yeah. Um, you might want to keep that Vincenzo guy up in his room while we explore the rest. Or at least down the hall. Yeah, he can stay at the in- intersection, maybe, and we'll go down. Or one of us can stay at the intersection with him. No, just keep him in his room while we go down the okay. hall. He seems confused. He's like, what, what is happening? Well, we need to keep you safe uh, while we check out the rest of the uh, area. He Looking said, for that but, case of yours. But there is no door on my cell anymore. Yeah, we broke it down. Yeah, but it... <laughs> <It's> <laughs> gone. at least you can sit down. Uh, okay, and he he like hobbles back inside of his cell and just stands there with his candle. Um, the door <laughs> at the end of that hall is about 40 feet past you. And it also looks like a thick uh, oak door with like iron hinged uh, uh, iron hinges and, and straps. Um, yeah. But there is not a gap at the bottom. There, this doesn't mm-hmm. look like a prison door. There's no gap at the bottom. And you don't see any light flickering from behind it. Do we see any keys on the wall next to the door? Or no. a lock? The door does not seem to uh, have a keyhole. It just has a handle. Um, I'm going to listen at the, at the door with... Um, see if there's any sound coming from it. Okay. You do not hear any sounds. I think if there was anyone in there, they would have heard us breaking down the door, so... Maybe they might yeah. have left a surprise for us, so I think I might check for traps. <laughs> okay. Real quick. Good idea. Mm-hmm. It's success. I have three out of three. You feel around. It does not seem like there are any traps. Seems good. Alright. Oh, I stole my bow yeah. and get them with my rapier. Yeah, I wait. You ready? I have my rapier out as well. Alright. I open, open it up. The door. Yep. Okay. <clears throat> when you open the door, you see a, a room that's significantly better than these small rooms have been. About three times the size. But it's it's mm-hmm. it's wider, but it's also like three times longer. It's a long kind of rectangular room. And, and this, the walls of this are clearly mined. Like, so it's, the room kind of starts off straight, but then you can see where they started mining in and then stopped. And then they went to another spot and mined, like, it's almost like exploratory hallways, but that don't go mm-hmm. anywhere. Right. The, the, uh, there is one single um, kind of tread, wooden, wooden track through the middle of the room and at the far end you see a cart and on like on that cart and in that cart is is like lumps of dark 
rock. Um, who who has the torch? Roll good. I have one. Okay, so you guys, can see, you guys can see through the through the lantern and the torchlight that this looks like an actual, um, like a a, a a larger mining cavern. You also see, uh, like when you first enter the room, on the wall are these these metal um, nails pounded in, and there are picks and hammers hanging from these, and also shovels, um, and you see wooden. Um, buckets, just lines of them. Okay, um, and most of them are empty. There's cob. There are cobwebs all over this room, as if nobody's passed through here in a very long time. Um, but the farthest end of the room, you can't really see too much, just with your basic lantern and uh, torchlight, because it's it's about ninety feet long. I explored deeper in. Yeah, let's okay. sign out. If there's a back entrance. Uh, all of you guys can make investigation uh, search rolls. That's a success, a two. It's a one against two. It's a success. Okay. Uh, fail for me. You, you don't find any exits from this room. But as I said, it does look like there were several pitted areas where they started mining in a direction and stopped and then moved over like 20 feet down, mined in their direction. And in one of these corners, as you were searching, um, Rollgood, you succeeded. Did did yes. did the rest of you guys succeed? I did. I, I'm the only one that failed. I failed. Okay, so Freya and Rollgood, you guys go over by one of these these niches, these mined niches, and you see, like in each one, there are some like tools that have been left there that are, you know, long ago like rusted, uh, and some buckets. Most of them have this dark rock. Um, and in one of the niches on the far end of the room, you see a couple of these buckets that have dark rock, but then you see like as you're holding your lantern and torches, there's something just under the dark rocks that's reflecting back at you. And I you, expect you you take I scrape at it with my with my rapier, not with my hand. So so basically when you do that, you see that you you have found raw um chunks of silver. Like big like fifteen pound chunks of silver that were in the bottom of the bucket and like coal was thrown on top of them to conceal them. Um, so you each are able to gather two 15 pound chunks of raw silver ore. That's mm -hmm. fantastic. Fantastic. Now I wonder if I want to try and carry all that stuff. It's up to you. I'm going to take them. I'm not carrying anything crazy. I'll I take I'm gonna leave him. I'll you take one. Come back if you want, but... I'll take one. Well, if you okay. bring it to my attention, I'll take the other one that Freya's not gonna take. All right. Oh. So, so um, that is you guys kind of do a whole perimeter search. That's pretty much the extent. It does not look like this has been used in a really long time. Mm-hmm. Well, time to check the other. Uh, so no. Um, uh, case that we were actually actually looking for. No, not no. here. Well, let's continue the search, guys. Yeah, and that's... there's nothing here. There should be one more area that we haven't searched. So you you leave this room, you go down the hall, you look in the the, the room and like Finchandra Check on his candle. Yeah. And, like, what now? Should I follow you or stay here? Stay. We're almost done searching. Okay. We're going to the other end of the tunnel uh, of the the hallway, and it's back there. And I mean, leave there. We we'll, we'll get you on this end of the hallway. So you you go again. This is like a hundred feet down, right? And you get to the end of this hallway. This is a far different doorway. Not just the door itself. Okay, there's actually masonry supporting. The, the the frame and the structure, like additional brickwork, 
was put in. So it's not just the raw rock that they mined through. This is like actually bricked up all the way around the entire wall. And the door itself is in a very like thick wooden timber frame. And the door itself is also thick like oak with metal banding. There is a handle and a lock. Is there a key on the wall? Nope. There's a lock. <laughs> I'll try to pick it, although my picking skills are not very good. What is it? So let me give let me give it a try. Is that tinkering or is there another skill for that? It is. Oh, that's a five. That's a fail. Okay. <clears throat> Are you, are you any better at it, Freya? Um, no. I have two for tinkering. It's more than mine. You want to give it a try? Give All it right. a try. I'll poke at it. Yeah, okay, two for two. So, Freya, you you kind of follow what Roll Good was doing, and you try like a different combination. And just at the last moment, when you feel like your pick might snap in half, you hear the clicking of a tumbler, and you feel like you have just unlocked this door, and the handle is before you. I think we ought to check for traps again. That might have been a good idea before we tried to open the door. <laughs> <laughs> but go ahead and have, have a look, yeah. Elena. Uh, I think that failed. I, I I succeeded. Okay, I failed. I'm close. I'm close to the door. I'm opening it. So you don't yeah. see any traps. You open the door. With uh, the light of your lantern, you see a very large square room. Shield and mace. The this room looks clean, like like it was mined out and then finished out. So the brickwork, the masonry goes throughout the entire room. Um, the floor seems like it is rock, but it was smoothed out. Smoothed out. And there's uh, like a red carpet that runs the length of the walkway into the room and then leads to a much larger, huge red square carpet with like ornate designs, right? Like the thread work is incredible. Uh, this room is not filled with cobwebs. It is not dusty looking. And although there's no light, you see sconces put into the wall, positioned about every 10 feet to hold torches. And there are torches in there that are not lit. When you guys enter and you look around, you see these long rectangular tables uh, spaced out evenly on the three walls, like when you walk in, it's like the left, the wall straight ahead of you, the wall to the left and the wall to the right. There are three of these long rectangular tables on each of those walls that have like red fabric draped over them. So you can't really see like what's on the table or under the table, but these long rectangles with fabric draped over them, almost like a really long tablecloth. Um, are on each of the three walls on your sides and in front of you. I'd like to have get a closer look at the tables. Okay. Yeah, I'm um, trying to find that box. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, these long rectangular tables are about two feet wide by six feet long. Um, and you see as you get closer to the first one, that the fabric just seems to be loosely draped over the table as if you could like lift it up and see what's underneath. Like there's I'll stuff underneath the cloth? Yeah, it's the, the cloth oh. runs all the way to the floor. So if uh -huh. you want to see what's underneath it, you'd have to lift it up. I'll do it. Okay. You pull the cloth off and you see a low table. And on that low table is a coffin. Uh, uh, let's leave that. Yeah, it's not, let's it's go to the next that. table really fast. Get stay away from the Same coffins. Thing. No they all coffin? have coffins. Yep. Three. Any any um, writing or uh, symbolism on them? Yes. 
and the top of each one is a crescent. Guys, let's get out of here. Is there a chest? <laughs> we just need there... to find this chest and get the hell out of here. And by the way, did you count how many there were? Yeah, nine. Mm -hmm. I was just going to say. <laughs> you don't open any of them? They're not locked. Oh, yeah, they're not locked. They're not locked, <laughs> he says. Of course they're not. <laughs> uh, are they wooden? Yes. Well, we could try and torch them. Where's um, the chest? I want to find the chest first. <laughs> you, you don't see any chests. You don't see anything else in this room other yeah. than the, the nine coffins. <sighs> Guys, should sure we you don't want to open them? This? Should we I'm bring anything to him and ask him what he knows about all this? I'm a grown woman and I'm scared. <laughs> so, guys, do you want me to open one? You guys stand out by the door and I'll open one. No. Okay. No. As, I'm going to get Vincenzo and ask if he you knows. You saw what, what happened last time, bro. Good. <laughs> yeah. You really want to chance that again with just three of us? No. Okay. Let's get out of here. Now, I'm right. going to get no. Vincenzo and ask what he knows. Okay, you, you can do that real quick. Room and you, you get Vincenzo. Mm -hmm. He follows you down the hall. And when he gets to the room, he says, what is this place? And he like looks and he sees Rollgood and and um, Elena. And, and I mean, now he sees that these are coffins because yeah. you guys pulled off, you know, at least three yeah. of the sheets. I'm pointing out that there's the, the crescent symbol pointed out to him. And he says, I... I do not know what what is this place. What is it? Insight check. A, a, a tomb. Yeah, sure. You want to make an insight check? Any of you? Go ahead. I don't believe okay. anybody right now. I'm make so a paranoid. wisdom. Make a wisdom roll under. Okay. Me too. Hello, down. That's oh, not good. That's four over. Yeah, I'm over. So over, over as well. So over this bullshit. It's too bad that you don't have a cleric of Inos to help you. <laughs> um, oh, man. You, you look. He's he's looks genuinely confused. He's like, "What is this a tomb? Why are there these these caskets here?" Well, do you know we we have noticed and found that there are nine candle holders, and I'm assuming that you want to find your case because there's another candle holder in there. Um, do you think it is in here? What do you know about these candle holders and their meaning? What? I, I can tell you if we can find my case because I have my family has kept the history. <laughs> my family okay. has kept the history for a long time. Okay, we know this. Someone. We know the story. He, he says, "How do you know it? I have just met you. I do not understand." So, guys, we need We've to get out of here. Yeah. These orcs were looking for the candle holders, and yes, uh, it, we encountered them. And yeah. since then, we've <laughs> been hunting those candle holders. I, I put my mace. We have several of them now. Okay, and I'm gonna pull a Batman. Who are you? We've already met one of you. <laughs> All right, make a. <laughs> Is um, intimidation here? Make a, or make a charisma roll under. Yeah. <laughs> You're intimidating. Oh, that's <laughs> good. <laughs> uh, I am six under. Wow, really? Okay. Yeah, I have a 12 charisma and I rolled a six. You, you see genuine fear on this dude's face as you, like, <laughs> pick him up and, and like, slam him up yeah. against the wall. And he's like, I, I am Niccolo Vincenzo of House Vincenzo of Southport. Please, I can prove who I am. If you find my case, I will show you my, my signet ring, my, my, my family's book, the history of the candle holders. Please. Why is there a mark on your neck? I, I, I do not know. I, I, I told you they captured me and put a bag, a sack over my head. I, I, I felt the pain of the burning on my neck. They put this thing on my neck. Please, to help me. <sighs> uh, if Let you bring go. me to... Uh, he goes, you are from this area, yes? There is a man. From the south. The, uh, and he, he looks to Freya. And he says, what you, man? You, there is a man, a, a lord. His name 
is Lord Trenton Lee. If you bring me to him, he will vouch for me. He knows my family. Please. Of course he will. Okay. (laughs) Right. Let's get the hell out of here. So let's go. so pissed off right now. Wasn't there one more um, stinky hallway that we didn't check out yet? Yeah. It's a stinky hallway. Um, So you guys, you guys are leaving the room. Yes. I'm closing the door. Time to get the hell out of here. And And I'm going to try and lock it again. Okay. Where does it lock up by itself? Um, no, it it uh, no, it doesn't lock by itself. Right. I'm gonna try and lock it back up again. Okay. Go ahead. <clears throat> that's the... No, that's a six. <laughs> Let me give it uh, a try. Yeah. I'll give it a try. That's a four. We we'll just leave it try. and go. I ain't gonna fuck with it. All right. Let's go to the stinky hallway and get out of here. here. Come on. (laughs) Before something comes out of that room. I'm just waiting for Cthulhu to come as we come out of here, man. I'm just so, (laughs) so fucking done. Mad a moment. You guys are a bunch of pussies. (laughs) (laughs) Open the case. I wanted to open one, but they said no. I don't want to die right now. (laughs) Dude. I, really, right. I swear to torch them. Yeah. If so, I want to die, go. Okay. get all so, the candle holders first. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. So you guys go north. You go across the main hall to the the, the upper halls, and it, it you catch that smell. There's a – when you get to that T intersection, there's, there's one side to the right that ends in a dead end, and then there's mm-hmm. – two rooms on the left side so it's like the opposite of the other hallway you know what i mean mm-hmm. you go left there's two rooms if you go right there's one room. so right one room left two rooms it's all right okay. okay you go to the right hallway looks like a standard mining door like you've seen before um and it is unlocked you guys ready? I look behind me. Yeah, let's go. I kick this one open. <laughs> it swings the other way. Mean. Yeah. It's <laughs> the other way. You take six points of damage. <laughs> I tear my discus. <laughs> Your kneecap is shattered. Um, um, okay, so you you open it up. It is nine coffins. It oh, is God. another room similar to the mine office. This one has a desk. This one has shelves, and it has a bunch of small wooden chests on oh, the. Lord. Okay. I move in. Are there okay. any with with writing that we can discern? Yeah. Oh, those no. things. Don't recognize any of them. Yeah, is this um, one of your chests? He he says, like these are these are all like very dusty, very dirty looking wooden chests. Because mm-hmm. uh, he's like he's no, I do not think my my chest is here. Mine is bigger and uh, uh, finer quality. Are the chests locked? Nope, they're all open. Open, open, open or no? Unlocked. I mean, unlocked. Sorry, you would still have yeah. to lift the hinges. Yeah. I lo- I open one. See what's okay. Up. So you find in the first one that you open, um, what looks like food, like dried food that is very desiccated and rotten. Yeah. Open Just up all of them. Right. Yeah. Okay. You open up all of them. You find an abundance of copper coins. Mm-hmm silver coins and gold coins this looks like uh they are all um minted um with the uh the seal of um house lee payroll of course they are so um you also see on the desk there are some very old looking ledgers and after a cursory kind of read through, you get the impression 
that this this was a operating mine approximately 40 years ago right um okay. and that the the land upon which this mine sat uh obviously was owned by house lee and therefore mm -hmm. um house lee was the you know operator of this mine yeah um oh. it has a, a rundown of all of the miners the names of the miners and like what towns they were from and yeah. the dates in which they were paid by the payroll uh it's a very thorough ledger and it's mm -hmm. you find it odd that it was like just left here like and all of this coin was left here yeah. well, and the other chests the other chests contain just a bunch of like crap that is long ago rotted yeah like food and and you know other stuff that is petrified or 60 years old but the coins yeah. seem to be in good shape and the ledger book is still intact well we should definitely get this money back to lord lee Wink. yeah Wink. i think i would put down my 15 pounds of silver and just take the gold coins <laughs> i'm keeping all, all right. of that i don't want to carry that anymore i just want the gold okay so we'll split it in, in the chest in the chest with gold there is 20 gold coins the chest with silver has a hundred silver and then there are two chests with copper and each of the two chests has 250 copper so there's 500 copper total one gold 100 silver and two chests of what call copper 250 each 250 each. Uh, now, each of you also make a search roll on top of it. Yes. Okay. That's a four out of my four. Oh, yes, I got a one. Nice. Nope. I got a four. That's a pass. Uh, five against two. Um. Okay. Give me a moment. <laughs> okay, here we go. Yes. All right, who got the best <clears throat> roll? I got a one. I got a four. Okay. Missed it by, uh, by a lot. No problem. In the desk, Elena. Yes. Which is locked, but the key for it is literally on the desk, as if it was abandoned. <laughs> right. um, you unlock <laughs> the door of the desk and you open it up. You see a rolled up scroll, which looks like perhaps a, you know, it's it doesn't have like a wax seal or anything on it. So you open yeah. it up, and it looks like a map. It looks like a oh. map of the lands. You see, you see like Castle Lee and the t the town of Lee, and you see Oak Point, and you see like, you know, these different farmsteads. You see the mines. It's kind of a more detailed map of the area. Um, and you see. At the bottom of this, it, there's an arrow pointing south towards uh, Southport. Um, but you also find, in the midst of this, you find um, a golden brooch. And this is worth 15 gold pieces. Ooh. And it looks like a very fine Sweet. made piece of jewelry. Um, roll good. Yes. As you are searching one of the junk chests, you open it up and you see a large blue quartz, like a, a big, and but this is not like a, a rough rock, like that looks like it was pulled out of the mine. This looks like a gemstone that has been, you know, cut and faceted by a jeweler. It looks like it's in good shape. Nice. And that is that is worth 20 gold pieces. I put that brooch down down in here. <laughs> I put it right. Okay. 
Um, <laughs> and that is it. Okay. Let's uh, let's we split the money. I don't care how who's carrying what, but we split, I guess. Yeah, you just... guys go back down the other way. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. we need this. We need to find that chest though. I know we're getting rich right now, but we still need that damn candlestick holder. <laughs> right. Okay. As you go this way, the smell is a little more <clears throat> pungent. It's a little more stank. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, there's a door on your right. <laughs> it looks like a prisoner cell door because it has a four inch gap on the bottom. I swear to God. There is a spike. No. There, there is a spike on the outside, and there is a key ring with a key. Is there light? You do not see light. I was just about to say that. You do not see any flickering. Okay. Well, inspect that anyway. Okay, you get the key. You open the door. It's a cell. There's just nobody in it. There's no food plates. There's no candle stubs. It just looks like the same kind of room as the other two, but just empty. Okay. And again, no no case? Nope. Um, this brings you to the end of the hall. As you walk the additional 40 feet towards this, with every step you take, the the stench is more intense. (laughs) It's almost at the constitution saving throw, but not. So you you get, yeah, you're you're like, and you're, you know, you get closer and closer to this door. This, This door is not a prison cell door. There's no gap. Um, and there is a lock and there is a spike outside with a key ring and the stench is um, definitely coming from this whatever is beyond this door <laughs> are, you, are you ready open you it up you want to try yeah come on all right so so let's go who's opening it and what are you carrying i'm opening it and i'm carrying my sword my mace and uh shield like i've been doing the whole time okay Freya has the lantern and my lantern. raker, and Brolgood has rapier and torch. Torch, okay. Elena, you unlock the door, and you start to open it up into the room, but it like it like hits something. Like it's like, oh, stuck. like there's something the on room. the floor. Uh huh. Shoulder in. A death finish answer. Okay. Roll initiative. <laughs> oh. Fucking knew it. Fucking knew it. Goddamn oh, zombies. <laughs> 50 zombies in there. We're all going to die. <laughs> roll the one. I got a six. Did you really? Did you I did roll a one. Plus my dex, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's an eight uh, for me then. Uh, all right. Well, you automatically three. win because they're slow. So yeah. um, you, you open the door. And you, yeah. you know, you're like, what the hell? And then you just, like move it in, right? Yeah. So two things happen. Number one, the full step <laughs> hits you. Number two, <laughs> behind you, the light, the flickering torch light from Brolgood and the, the, the brighter lantern light from Freya <clears throat> reveals corpses on the floor <clears throat> piled up. And, and they're not stationary. They're like when you break through the door, they're like, Ugh. and these look, they are not fresh zombies. Let me yeah. make sure you understand this. Uh-huh. <laughs> these are, I mean, skin over bone, like desiccated zombies. These are corpses that have been rotting and dead for a for very a long while. time, like worms coming out of their cheeks. Nice. And, and like when they lift up some of them like their jaw just peels off right like How but many? there are there are the, a lot the of funk them. of 40,000 years yeah oh there there God. are like maybe just within your torchlight yeah this room is as big as the rectangle mine room so uh-huh, there so are at big. least 30 that you could see oh my God. themselves up off the floor so Torture. who went first I'm like who was first uh, I rolled. I have three. Okay. I rolled this first. I'm second. Roll good. You see this terrifying thing. 
if this were the game Call of Cthulhu, I would have you make a sanity roll right now, but it's not. So <laughs> what, would you, what would you like to do? And before you answer me, think really carefully about <laughs> So, but uh, I, where are we standing exactly? You because are- Elena was in front of me. She yeah. pushed the door open and yeah. I'm right behind her, right? So you can see just in the wedge of what's open in the door that there are piles of dead bodies that are starting to just, just <clears throat> you know, twitch and move and I'm like So I pull Elena back and I try to close the door. I was you gonna have to ask drop something. You have to drop your rapier or oh, your torch. I drop the torch. Yeah. I throw the torch okay. behind me and try to close the door. Okay. Well, I was gonna see if I saw the spot of the the chest real quick before. Well, because that I mean I'm not gonna go in there anyway, but I want to know. Don't see the chest. <laughs> okay. I'm not even gonna look. I'm just gonna try to close the door. Okay. I want you to make a strength. Okay. Check. My strength is. A roll under, or is that a... Sure. Yeah, okay. <laughs> that's a nine, and I have... That's a four under. Okay. Nice. You are able, at this point, to pull back. Uh, who is next in initiative? Okay. You right. see Rollgood, like, drops his torch and and grabs the, the handle of the door and starts pulling it closed. What do you do, Freya? Um, I'm going to assist... Okay, make me a strength check. Uh, under. Uh, let's see. Oh, strength, strength, strength. Uh, that's four under. You and Brolgood close the door. It is closed. You are holding the handle together. Uh, Elena, you are up. What do you do? Click. <laughs> you lock the door successfully. Um, as you step back, uh, roll good. You pick up your torch as you step back. You hear right. the inside, and not just the groans. You hear like the sound of meat falling off of bones, kind of sound. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and the smell yeah. is a little more pungent. You know, kind of like when somebody steps in dog dew, and then it, it kind of awakens the smell. The smell is even more pungent. Um, cowering in terror behind you about 10 feet back <laughs> is Niccolo Vincenzo who's like ah, what was that <laughs> let's, I don't know let's get out of here you don't want to know let's go <laughs> let's go up up, 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 up. You, guys, you, you guys go back down go around Are the keys you... in my pocket what's that the keys oh, in my pocket key. okay fair I'm enough keeping it. Um, he says my case. Have you found it? Have you checked everywhere? Everywhere but that everywhere. room. We ain't going back in there. Yeah. I think we have everything. We checked every, everything else, haven't we? So you lead him back up the stairs towards Gizmo and, and Kratos? Yep. Okay. So you guys go. Yep. You get back up through the, the other back room. You go up through the cobweb stairs. You get out the, the coffin top um, Gizmo, you and Kratos see. Hang on, know. I'm just, I'm gonna be behind the um, Vincenzo, still with my uh, rapier out. Okay. And uh, just uh, to, as soon as I see any nefarious reaction. Okay. Brolgood comes out. Um, Elena comes out, and then there's another Niccolo Vincenzo who comes out, and then Freya. And you see when, so Credo and Gizmo, you. You look and you're like, what the God awful smell? You, no, you look when the second Niccolo Vincenzo comes out and you look over to the first one that you've been sitting with for the last half an hour and you look back and forth between them. And then you all see them look at each other. Is that your brother? <laughs> Didn't know you had twin. I'm going to right. refer to them for your purposes as one and two. Okay. Uh-huh. One being the first one that you found. Two being the one that yeah. you just brought out. One looks at two and says, 
what are you? Why do you look like me? And Chu says, I was thinking the same thing. And then they both say at the same time, they're like, <laughs> well, I am Niccolo Vincenzo. And like, and they're like, oh, oh I God. am Niccolo Vincenzo. Who are you? And they're like, you see them become like more heated in this argument. They're like, I, I, this is some devilry. And like one turns to um, Gizmo and Kratos and is like, I, I, you know who I am. You found me. I, I've been sitting here with you. And two, two looks at Elena and Freya and Brogood and says, what is this madness? What is this witchcraft? Why, why is there someone who looks and talks like me? Something we'd like to know. Is more mm -hmm. tired and uh, like uh, bandaged up, like set up. <clears throat> Guys, I don't think the, the who is real isn't the problem right now. Let's get. Uh, oh. By the way, we didn't find the other candle holder. We couldn't mm -hmm. find the chest. And then when you say that, both one and two turn and look at you. And then they look at each other and they say, you had the candle? And the, the other one's like, yes. What about you? And, the, and so two looks at one and he says, I am from Southport, from House Vincenzo. And one says, I am from Southport, from House Vincenzo. I am Niccolo Vincenzo. And Chu says, if you are Niccolo Vincenzo, then what is our father's name? And one says, Martino. And Chu seems, Chu seems dejected. He's like, that was too easy. And they begin this quiz with each other. And they're, they're like looking back and forth at each other. And finally, after like three or four more like questions that either one of them answer one says to two how did you come to be in this place and two says my carriage was attacked on the road orcs armed and armored they kidnapped me after slaughtering my men they put a sack over my head and brought me here i have been here for weeks now and then one says the same thing happened to me. One man split into nine pieces, sharing like mind. Is my observation. Nine pieces? What do you mean? I believe you're part of an experiment. Chu looks at you and he's like, I do not remember any experiment. It would be while you were unconscious. You would not be aware of this. I believe there are seven more of you. Oh, shit. One says, where? And two, I perk up. not one, two, looks at Elena and Freya <laughs> and Golder. And two says, yes, where would there be seven more of us? Well, we did find nine coffins I, in a very I, special room underneath. Did you open them? Uh, no. no. We didn't open them. We didn't want to get killed. Okay. You know what? We know what's been happening every time we open a coffin up there, Gizmo. We did find a room full of old, old zombies. Oh, my like God. It. There was 30 zombies in there, and they were all old as dirt and crap. And they smelled and like it, too. Stench. Wow. But Here's the key. Yeah. Don't let anyone else take it. I put it back. Anything else interesting in there? Um, there's some silver and some um, bookkeep bookkeeping on the on the mine. But definitely not a not a chest with the uh, ninth candle holder. You know what yeah. seems what seems strange. They find another exit though. Yeah, there's another exit. Or entrance. Yeah. yeah. Same thing. Yeah. It's over there, my point, where we think it was. Vincenzo, you are a politician, either of you. Do you have any idea how would mine disappear from records? <sighs> the 
this land, uh, this is one speaking, this land, this is the land of Lord Lee? Should be. Yes, we think so. It would stand to reason and there would be records of his holdings, yes? <clears throat> this is blank spot on all maps he owns. On all maps? All that we have seen. And I look to had, Elena. Um, I just hold my finger up. I want number two's answer first before I do anything else. Chu says, I suppose that if there was something that was not on a map, on the land that was owned by a lord, it's because that lord does not wish it to be found. If this were my city, if my family owned something in Southport, but we did not want someone to know that we owned it, we perhaps would invest through someone else so our name was not attached to it. Interesting. Ooh. Have you heard any like commotion or the orcs just came in and then ran out around yourselves? Do you mean, so one says, do you mean when they would bring the food and water and candles? Yes, if, if they stayed for a no, while, done no something commotion. else, or they, just run in, run out. They would yell at us to back up and they would throw the, wa the water skin or the food on the plates under the door. And sometimes some candle. Mm. And Tu says, yes, it was like this for me. I do not know how long I was in this place. I feel like many weeks have gone by. Well, it's, it would be not advisable to stay around here, I think. If there is really nothing else to be found then there, I would prefer I, if we would head towards Gura Farm, but that's my... I have one more question to number one. How long have you been in, in your cell? One says, I do not know, perhaps some weeks. How many dinners did you get? How many times did you get your, your dinner? I do not know. Perhaps some weeks. Make wisdom roll on. Yeah. I don't trust that answer. All of us? Two under. That was uh, one over. Twelve over. <laughs> Six over. He's most too tired to... To roll. This Both of you who made it under, you sense that the response from both one and two seems genuine and honest, as if they really truly are uncertain of the passage of time. Okay. These things really are clones then. <clears throat> we really don't want to, but we might need to investigate those coffins. I really don't want to do that though. I know, I feel that we do need to do that. God damn it, Crater, I know you're right. There's only the only way to see if we've discovered <clears throat> everything that this place has to show us. I we, agree. We can Rest be you? smart about it. We don't have to rush in with our eyes closed. We can open the coffin and if we need be, we can run back out of there. Elena, Gizmo? I don't like it, but it's true. We have to find at least that candle holder if Fine. we want to do something about it. So who is going in and who is staying up or or are you just going to have... I, I think we should all go. Yeah. In, in, That's my in, feeling. Including, including, including the two soldiers. Including the Vincenzo's and the two soldiers. 
Okay. Yeah. All right. Everybody grabs their stuff. Would it be faster to go to the other exit, or would it just yeah, go to the Yeah, I was wondering that too. Uh, you well, you guys could show them where it is. You you could walk down the hill. Yeah. And then go back through. You could. Yeah. Let's let's do that. I guess. Yeah, that might be better. So who who has light? Because it's dark. So I have you got torch. You got the lantern. Two torches and a lantern. I have I have extra torches if we're short. So actually, Kratos, you hand a torch to one of the soldiers. So one of the soldiers has his axe, and then and then the other hand a torch. So you guys kind of have enough light for the group as you spread out. You head down there. Um, you get down the hill. You keep walking a little ways. There's kind of like a little rise in the hill, and then a dip, and some rocks and some bushes. And um, Brolgood leads you guys kind of around, and you see between these bushes and rocks, you see this overgrown you know entrance uh with like tree roots kind of framing it out and you crawl through and you see yourselves in this mine you walk back through the long winding kind of uh mine route it turns you pass the mine office you turn again and you get down to that lower um hallway where you found uh vincenzo number two you approach the um, finely worked dead end with the masonry and the the nice door. Um, it's it has a lock on it. We didn't I relock it though. Oh, you I didn't. We could number one. We tried, but we they tried and we couldn't lock it. Okay. All right. Well, then you open it. Mm. I want to ask if in chance of number um, one first question. Yeah. Do you remember when when they brought you in? Do you remember? Does it feel like you were going through these tunnels? He says. Uh, he says they they put a sack over my head. I. I don't. And you see, as he kind of like tries to recall, he like looks off. And you see, when he does this, number two kind of does the same. He doesn't say anything. Number two doesn't say anything, but he kind of like looks off and almost in like confusion. And he, he his right. voice just trail one's voice just trails off, and he's like, "I, I don't." It, it puts a sack over my head, and don't remember how I got here. I put my hand on his shoulder. It's okay, Fred. We will figure this out. Go inside and investigate. Yep. All right. Okay. You guys go in. Nothing has changed since you left. Although it would be, wouldn't it be awesome if like all of the cloths were back over the cloth? Oh my god! Oh my god! <laughs> but that's not what happened. It's nothing. <laughs> it is exactly as you left. So the first two <clears throat> coffins on your left, the cloths are off. Um, that you took off, and then you see, like I said, there's three on each wall, nine total. Gizmo tries to, like, uh, just take one of the candle holders and go around the coffins if anyone, any, any one of them, like, shakes. Um, I follow close to Gizmo as he does. Yeah, that. I'm right. I'm, I'm on the other side nothing, of him. Nothing shakes, no sounds are made. Okay. You have not opened any of the coffins, correct? No, no, not yet. No, we haven't. Nope. I'm going to go around tapping on the side of them, see if there's any sound (laughs) difference between them. Yeah, they're so scary. One of them sounds more hollow than the others, or... They they all (laughs) seem to have the same sound. Okay. I just picture us like Scooby-Doo, all walking in, all on each other. Well, so this is what I was going (laughs) to ask. There are nine coffins, three on each of the walls, other than the yeah. entrance. Yeah. So, how exactly are you guys in this room? Are you all kind of in the center? Are you in one big clump going from coffin to coffin, or have you spread out? Oh, making a quick, a quick walk around a gizmo returns towards the door that st- stands beside it. Yeah, because there are coincidentally nine of you in this room. There are two Vincenzos. The five of you and two soldiers. <laughs> I mean, that's, right. it's totally a coincidence. So 
I know. I'm just mentioning that because I want to know how you're approaching this. Uh, how is it? I think I think the initial research is just uh, just everyone roaming, okay. and I would say that before any action is really undertaken to uh, gather up by the door, I'll open up a, I'll open up probably the casket when we're ready. Open, prepare, open, yeah, and the open one up the one to the door, closest yeah. to the yes, door. Prepare, yes, right. prepare to torch whatever is inside. Okay, so you have torches, you have weapons. Elena, you open the first casket on the left, and it is empty. <laughs> it's empty. <laughs> Two of them should be empty. <laughs> I go to the next one on that same oh, wall. By the way, the, the interior is like a bed. It's like a comfortable nice. pillow. It's not oh. like a crappy wooden. This is like a top-notch coffin, right? Like, yeah. I feel the more to level. get in and like, take a nap. Yeah, I'm like, like you're like I feel it. I'm probably like, nicer than any bed that you've slept in. All right, so <laughs> you go to the second. <laughs> yeah, you have already taken the cloth off the second one. You open up the lid. It is empty. I look over. Empty again. I'll move on. Move on to the third one. You take the sheet off the third one. You open it up. There is a finely dressed Niccolo Vincenzo laying inside um like and when i say finely dressed you are from you and credo are from the south he yes. is dressed like an immaculate nobleman of southport like the white silk shirt with the like brocade tunic that's probably worth like everything that you're wearing uh like perfect leather boots like he's completely dressed like gold rings necklace his eyes are closed. He looks like he's sleeping, but he's not breathing. And he doesn't jump out at you. He's just... He looks like them, but clean and well-dressed. What's their reaction? Oh, they don't see this. They, they didn't just go me. up there. So it's just oh, a mm -hmm. I... Smack him with the handle of my mace. <laughs> you, like... He, his body moves, obviously, but it doesn't react. <laughs> Close the coffin. Okay. What do you see in there? I found number three. <laughs> what? What do you mean, you found number three? You know what I mean. Another. Did we check all of Vincenzo. them? Vincenzo. Might be number one. Do you check all of them? Yes. I'm definitely. asking. I'm asking. I'm checking them all. Let's, okay. let's go one after another. Yeah. Right. Go to four. Starting on, on the on the back wall. Back wall. You go to four. Another one. This one, immaculately dressed, just like the other guy. Every detail, like the hair, the clothes, the like exact replica oh. in the sleeping position. You go to five. <clears throat> same thing. Six. Same thing. Seven. Eight. And nine. Same thing. So there are seven more Niccolo Vincenzos immaculately dressed in perfect condition in a state of sleep where they are not breathing, but um, not reacting either. And they have nothing else in the coffin with them besides nothing the jewelry the they're wearing. With them and the room, again, I'm just gonna re-describe the room, nine low tables with coffins on them. All of the coffins match. All of these were covered by red long velvet cloths in the center of the room big red uh like you know think of like a persian rug but like huge square red um carpet and then a short red runner leading into the room pull back the carpet ah there we go you pull back the carpet and you see a trap door leading down of wood. It's wooden. I don't remember the carpet being described last time, but I maybe I misheard. Someone check for traps, then I'll get the lock open. Is it locked? I got a decent, I I got a decent trap trap checking. I got three pips. And I got a one. You check for traps. It does not seem to be trapped. Um, it also locked. doesn't seem to be locked. It oh. looks like if you just pull the iron ring, you can open the trap door. I'm going to stand next to Elena with my torch and my rapier just in case there are zombies again. 
Okay. You don't smell anything, by the way. You don't smell anything. Okay. No. Nothing like the other one. The other hallway. Mm. Well, I say we put one and two in the two empty ones and see what happens. Mm. <laughs> let's, I don't think they want to go in. like a terrible idea. Pretty I sure. Let's, yeah, it, that's awful. <laughs> that's not if I remember, Doug, Douglas and Kendall Holders are it, missing, but I would not complete it. Did you open the trap door or no? Uh, I hadn't yet. Okay. So who is around the trap door of vicinity? Well, I'm I standing next obviously... to Elena. Okay, so you have you have the torch. There's right. more light in the room with the other guys holding the torches. I'm hanging so back with uh, two Vincenzos and uh, two soldiers. Okay. Should we leave the soldiers and the Vincenzos here? Yeah, I'm, I was going to say, I was go about to instruct the soldiers to keep a close eye on these two Vincenzos. Um, yeah. Okay, they nod. And when I'm behind, uh, when the, the Vincenzos can't see me and the soldiers can, I was like, I watch them and kill if needed. If they, you know. Nobody goes anywhere. Yeah. And then, uh, then okay. I join the party. Yeah. Someone opened the door. I'm holding my mace and my shield. Um. Okay, then I'll have to put away my rapier and. Just open, just open the door. Yeah. So it's the trap door. Well, you open the trap door. Yeah, I'll do it. You see wooden, a la like a wooden ladder that goes down to a very rough hewn, um, kind of like almost like a crawl space, like obviously like part of a mine kind of thing, roughly hewn out of the rock, and it goes down about eight feet, and you could see that it ends in a floor and that there's some kind of chamber down there. Roll good. Throw your torch down there. All right. I throw my torch down. Okay. You you peek down, um, <laughs> and with the light of the torch in there, you you see another coffin, but it is not covered with a pretty velvet cloth. It is roughly hewn wood, not an awesome coffin, not covered with a pretty cloth, and it is covered in dust. And there's cobwebs all over the place. Your box down there? Yep. I mean, like a chest? Yep. It looks like at one time the chest might have been a nice, you know, traveling trunk. But it's also covered in cobwebs and dust as if it's been there for a long time. I'm going to... Stow my weapon and shield. Yep. And I look at everyone. Cover me, please. With I get bows. my rapier back out, of course. Something. Okay. Cover me I've with got something. my long sword out. I look. I look over mm -hmm. to number one, uh, Mister uh, Vincenzo. What year would you say? How? What year was it when you all traveled from Southport? This year, just a few weeks ago. And what year? Meta, meta moment. I don't know what the year structures are. So how would I be able to determine? Said, uh, well, you know, I'll tell you what that. his year was. The year, the year right now is um, 1622. Okay. That is what you know okay. as the current year. Okay. So when he asked, responds to you, though, when you ask, he says, "What well, this year? This just year. a few weeks ago." And by chance, what year is this? 1522. Of course, it is. Of course. And he looks at the other Vincenzo, and, he, and the other Vincenzo is like, yes. Do we tell them and break their little hearts? Not right now. No. Let's, let's, let's deal with that a little later. So, let's Elena, adjust. let's see what you got. We get down. And uh, the, is the chest locked? The chest looks fine. It, it looks, no, it's not locked. Um, it's covered in cobwebs and dust. Yeah. And then, like I said, next to it is a wooden coffin, a very basic wooden coffin. So which do you want to open first? 
Well, as Elena reaches the bottom and of the, of the ladder, I'm going to go in after. Okay. All right. So, Elena, you go down uh, ab about 10 feet away from the ladder, you know, kind of at the end of this crawl space is the, the trunk, the chest, and the coffin. Freya, you come down, your lantern providing a little more additional light. <clears throat> oh, I leave the lantern open. I'll just grab the torch. Okay. I open you guys want me to come down or you want me to stay up here? Um, stay up there for a while. It's, it's rather okay. cramped. Open the chest. Open the chest. Okay. Inside of the chest, um, you see a fine set of clothing. Like, remarkably high quality white silk shirt, a beautiful brocade tunic. It's oddly familiar. <laughs> yeah, I was going to ask. Um, <laughs> Just like the others. You like dig through the rest of the trunk? Yep. You find a book. Mm -hmm. And it is looks very old. Mm -hmm. uh, it's well bound, but it looks like you know, it, it's it's pretty old, um, mm -hmm. and, and it is there. And you see on the front cover of the book is a symbol of a crescent. And that seems to be all that's in the trunk. I look for the false bottom that I was told about. You find the false bottom. Nice. You lift it up, and you see a candle holder. Oh I look over at Freya. I nod. I, I Freya, come here. Yeah, I see. You see that book too? Mm-hmm. Knowledge. I can leave. Just go. Just leave through it for a sec. Yeah. Let's okay. See. I'll. So as you open it, it's the first probably thirty pages seem to be handwritten like a handwritten journal almost. <clears throat> mm -hmm. And it seems to be an accounting of um, a young nobleman named Niccolo Vincenzo of um, and <laughs> his commission to the military in a, a, a part of a joint military mm -hmm. campaign to fight off invaders that had come to the borderlands. Um, and he kind of has different notes about like, you know, the expeditions that they took and how, you know, they, at almost every turn, they were kind of being attacked, uh, by these strange, you know, mysterious forces at night. And the, you know, it's, it's just kind of a gradual accounting of loss after loss after loss until eventually it starts to delve into, um, how they met up with a nobleman from the North named Lord Trenton Lee. And Lord Trenton had a certain amount of knowledge regarding witchcraft. And though that was forbidden, that Lord Lee knew a way to change the tide of the war, to defeat these mysterious enemies um, and make a pact. And as you kind of continue reading this narrative, it, it basically starts to articulate how um, this group of nobles led by Lord Lee, but including Niccolo Vincenzo. And then, you know, basically they read off the other seven names, all of whom are family names that you guys have become very familiar with, including Bello, Arnolfson, Kerr, right? They're all these families. Um, and basically the narrative is that they found this place on Lord Trenton's lands, um, a place that had a magical energy to it, an ancient place, and that they began to, you know, prepare these factotums um, using these this this very ancient petrified wood um, to channel the magical powers of this area and to summon the spirits of the dead to serve them. And that basically, then there's like a bunch of notes about like their their armies winning battle after battle and repelling the invaders. 
And then the last kind of entry towards the end of the book seems to describe that all of the families have agreed that the power that they unleashed with this pact that they made was far too great to leave in the hands of any one man. And they decided to go their separate ways, never meet again, and never speak of what they did to win the war. Jesus Christ. Are we all hearing these stories or is it just the guys looking? I just summarized what probably took you at least 10 minutes to just skim. There's a lot for detail. Yes. Okay. So I'm going to say that, like, at any point in time, you guys could have come down and, you know, like, you're you're kind of sharing the you information. Could have, you could have heard Elena's bedtime story that she just read to you. Yes. <laughs> Which was terrifying. Um, there is still the matter of the fact that on the false bottom, there is a candle holder sitting there. Yep. Does anyone pick it up? I'm not picking it up right now. I got the book. Now leave it in the case and bring the case up. I see. Okay. <laughs> well played, Niels. We'll see what happens. All right. Um, <laughs> you just close the like case and bring it up. Villain. You you hand it up to to Credo. Uh, what about the coffin? Who's all down here? I'm still down there. I haven't climbed back up yet. The roll goes. Or did I go down? Yeah. Freya is here. Um, mm-hmm. this soldier, soldier. Well, I mean, I've opened a bunch of coffins today already. What's one more? Are there <laughs> any other markings? Famous last words. No, there are, are no we... other markings on this. It is it is a plain, it's like a pauper's coffin. Mm-hmm. Like, it's it's not even a perfect box. It's like not square. <laughs> one of the, yeah. It's Shoddy like work. Made. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Hold the torch right. for me. Be, be ready to. Put it in a Yo, I don't it, bro. Torch, torch, oh, rapier. I've got my red for my stab if you need it. Okay. <laughs> All right. Here we go. I open it. You guys open it up, and inside you see a, a long dead corpse. Okay, like this is not. This is a, a desiccated body, right? Like a mummy would be, okay? Mm-hmm. Um, the features on this corpse do not look like Niccolo Vincenzo. You you still see that this corpse, even though its skin is like peeled back, you know, it doesn't have like dark curly hair. Mm-hmm. It has kind of like straight, thick hair that is... Um, kind of a dark brown with a little bit of gray on the edges and it has like a very noble mustache and beard it has a very similar look in a way and and in a manner of speaking to someone that you've seen before and then it occurs to you as you bring the light a little closer that you see this corpse is dressed not in the nobleman fashion of uh, Niccolo Vincenzo in in the the fashion of a noble from Southport, but rather the clothing that this person wears is more of an old-fashioned classical type of nobility that you would see more in the north. And as you look at this, you notice that this corpse, with its hands over its chest, bears a signet ring on its finger. And that is the signet ring of Castle Leap. And that is where we are on this episode. (laughs) God, I hate being right all the time. (laughs) Tune in next time, people, and find out what the Lamenters are going to do about this hot, hot mess. Make sure that you subscribe, like the video, and of course, click on the notifications bell so you don't miss another episode. We'll see you on the next one.
hello, it's me, Wizzy. I'm back once again to remind you to subscribe and click on the notifications button and also watch videos that are over there. And then don't forget to tune in to the next episode of whatever show you are just watching and crafting videos and DM tips and pro tips for vlogging and all sorts of gaming things.